Let's do a review. Welcome to Life in My Shoes. This week, I'm going to do a review of the Wild Wild West box set. So, let me give you a little bit of background before I get into the review. <coughs> Obviously, this is a five uh, set uh, box set in a slip, key, slip case. Uh, the series... Uh, Wild Wild West ran from 1965 to 1969. It was 104 episodes, uh, something like 86 plus hours uh, of viewing time. Uh, it is, uh, this set is 26 discs long. <coughs> so a little details about the series. Uh, it starred Robert Conrad as James West whom was a uh, ladies' man, uh, generally the central character in each of the stories. And um, what I like to say is he spoke with his fist, was involved in a lot of fisticuffs. Uh, the second character, second primary character, <clears throat> actor Ross Martin played Artemis Gordon. Artemis Gordon was the inventive genius of the group and also uh, was frequently highlighted in a disguise uh, in uh, every story he was in. He pretty much had some kind of a disguise where it fit into the storyline for him to be disguised in one to many different uh, personas. <coughs> so the premise is that these are two uh, secret agents uh, serving the U.S. government during the President Grant eras, which I think was... Uh, um, 67 to 71 or something like that, or 77. I can't remember if he ran one or two, if he had two terms or not. Um, but it was during the President Grant era. <clears throat> and President Grant, um, played by multiple actors throughout the life of the series, including uh, Artemis Gordon, Jane, Ross Martin, uh, disguised as President Grant, played by multiple characters throughout the series and appeared in the series. So as secret agents, they often were, were getting orders from President Grant. They traveled around the United States in a train. Um, that was kind of their base of operations, and it was kind of tricked out, had all their uh, little uh, doodads and special weapons and uh, uh pool balls that would explode into a knockout gas or were bombs or whatever. They had everything in their kind of train. And in the first season for a portion of the episodes, they actually had a butler. <coughs> so speaking of the first season, of the four seasons of the series, the first season is the only season that is in black and white. So uh, from season three through four, the series converted to color um, and, uh, it, it was, um, I wouldn't say anything beyond that really changed. Um, the storyline stayed the same, whereas something like the Avengers, the M appeal years, when it converted from black and white to color, the format slightly changed. This was not the case. It, it stayed very similar. Um, the Every episode of the series is uh, the night of the blank. Uh, with the exception of one, it's just called night of blank. Um, but every episode in the series, so 104 episodes a night up blank, uh, the, they are very commonly <clears throat> dealing with, uh, some kind of issue that is, uh, it has the potential to impact a still forming United States. And remember, this is very closely following or set in a period, very closely following the civil war. President Grant was one of the Civil War generals, heroes of the Civil War. And so um, some of the stories revolve around that, the fact that uh, it's a disgruntled c Confederate or uh, someone trying to get what they felt they were supposed to get out of the Civil War. Um, but these two secret agents are generally tasked by the president to go address some kind of issue that is addressing a steel, still healing um nation that still has some splinters and still has some uh, infrastructural 
uh, weaknesses. Um, so as I mentioned, very high tech. I mentioned the train was tricked out. I mentioned that Artemis Gordon was a uh, inventive genius. So the story's always highlighted uh, some kind of trick gadget, something, uh, including James West that had a gun that would shoot up out of his uh, coat, a little uh, wrist holster of sorts, and it would shoot out a little, uh, I think it was a little Derringer would shoot out. Um, they had uh, different kind of, uh, there were uh, materials that would, could hold a certain weight for only a set period of time, which always fit into uh, the storyline. There were uh, zip line kind of launchers. There were bombs. There were explosives. They were always picking locks with doodads. They had stuff stored kind of like in their belts. Uh, James Weston, his back of his lapel, had lock picks stored in it. Um, so they always had this kind of gadgetry around that they had access to and it was kind of a neat play uh, and kind of led to the premise that this wasn't what i would say a traditional cowboy series uh because of the gadgetry i i have described it as almost steampunk-esque um but they had a lot of the gadgetry but not only that but the espionage and there were elements of supernatural um that you know in one story there was a ghost it was part of the storyline um the plot of the government agents to get to the bottom of an issue. Uh, but there were kind of supernatural issues and like very forward thinking, you know, again, it was a series that was produced in the sixties, supposed to be in the 1860s. And so knowing what was known in the 1960s, they were able to like leverage some of that knowledge, like, you know, uh, sound waves, you know, how could sound waves be effective, uh, etc. How can you control weather? Things like that. So it was kind of ahead of its time in that um, they were always battling the criminal masterminds. And one particular criminal mastermind uh, character of Dr. Miguelito Loveless, was played by Michael Dunn, appeared 10 times throughout the series. And it is by far the best villain of the series and is who in the big screen movie with Will Smith and Kevin Kline uh, and Kenneth Branagh, uh, who plays Dr. Loveless, uh, based off of the uh, Dr. Loveless in the TV series, which was the premiere, the premiere villain. Uh, the series did have two made-for-TV movies in 1979 and 1980. Um, that featured, uh, uh, the first one featured uh, Dr. Loveless Jr., so it was supposed to be the son of Dr. Loveless, because I believe Michael Dunn, the original actor, passed away in 1973. Um, and then the second one was supposed to be a continuation with uh, Dr. Loveless Jr., but uh, was not able, the, the actor was not able to uh, be in the role, so they rewrote the role to a new character, and uh, and that story was there. So um, some pros of the series. Obviously, it's a hefty series, 104 uh, episodes, 86 ish hours. It has taken me, um, since Christmas, I've been watching this since about Christmas and just finished it a couple weeks ago. So it's taken me four or five months to watch this a uh, couple episodes a, a day and night. Um, it, uh, is a hefty series. So that, that is one, uh, it is a very uh, unique premise. So uh, I enjoyed that. It's a nice mix of the cowboy, uh, the technology, the espionage, a little bit of supernatural. Uh, and obviously, um, Dr. Miguelito Loveless, the original in the series, is a huge uh, draw. Great villain, uh, well played, um, and someone that you know I, I really enjoyed when it was a Dr. Loveless episode. It was always an episode that I would perk up a little bit more. Um, some of the cons of the series are that obviously uh, the series is called Wild Wild West. Now, none of my readings really alluded to the fact that it was primarily about James West, but when you watch it, you, you definitely get the feel that it is primarily about James West and Artemis Gordon is kind of his sidekick, um, which is unfortunate. I would rather have had them as equals. James West was always... Um, he would always be like the one the story would follow while, while Artemis would go off and do something else, which helped because Artemis was always coming back in some kind of disguise. 
but you know the main fight uh more commonly james west would get the lady um so it it focused around that so i i felt that they should have been more equals the story should have had more following artemis gordon um uh, another one of the cons is, I believe, uh, if my information is correct, that Ross Martin injured himself towards the end of season three. Um, I think it was a leg injury, like a fracture or something. The story wrote in his fracture, so he's limping in the story. Um, and then in season four, uh, Ross Martin uh, had a heart attack and was out. And so they had to write the character was uh, in Washington on special assignment. And they had guest appearances. Now, the guest appearances weren't in and of itself bad. Uh, there were like something like four or five different actors that came in and filled the role, um, not of Artemis Gordon, but it, of fill-ins to help uh, James West on his adventure. Uh, one of those was the skipper from Gilligan. Um, and I don't remember the actor's name, Bob Hart or something like that. But... Um, and uh, actually, in that instance, he the character he played was totally different than Artemis. Other than that, some of the other characters that were fill-ins, it felt like the Artemis role was just given a different name. So it was just it was same it was exact same characterization, etc. So um, that was one of the cons, but it was something they couldn't manage. Um, they c- couldn't not deal with. Um, so, uh, all in all, it's a fun series. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I had been wanting to pick this series up for quite a while. Um, so, uh, scale one to five, what would I give it? I'd give it a four. Um, solid entertainment, pretty clean. Um, this series did uh, run afoul of the U.S. government. Uh, was towards the latter part of the series, was really trying to make a movement to... Uh, control violence on television. The series kind of came uh, in the crosshairs and I think was probably uh, canceled as a product of that overall initiative. But good fun. If you like um, Cowboys, this is a unique spin on Cowboys. Um, 86 hours worth of a unique spin. It does kind of lose some of its uniqueness over time. So obviously, they start running out of stuff. You could see some of the reuse of the sets in, in uh, the early seasons. But still a good series, good, clean, fun. Um, and I highly recommend it, four out of five. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of Wild Wild West? What did you think of the big screen remake? Um, do you uh, have a frame of reference for uh, it, it being based off this series? And how do you think it handled the materials based on the original source? Uh, and we'll talk next episode. I'm going to do another review. I'm going to do a review of my HP X2 Chromebook. So come back next week or next episode, and we'll talk about that. Thanks. Bye.